This video is a snapshot of our elephant logging retrieval program, which is pioneering log recovery throughout the lower Pacific Rim. See the mighty lords of the jungle as they seek out these lost logs from the bygone eras. These are wild elephants trained to find these old lost logs. Here we are out in the jungle, logging away, walking through the bushes. Oh! <laughs> Hello, The log should be big, I, I told you about this. You Bring it back upstairs, up back again, not, not easy. These highly trained elephants seek out these lost logs that have been strewn about the forest. Sometimes they're in piles. See how they tumble down the hill where elephants are waiting to grab the logs to pull them down to the river. We'll take you on a journey showing you how these elephants bring the logs from the forest down to the factory. Here's the elephant's having a, sm a small snack as he grabs some local bamboo shoots and munches approximately 350 kilos or 800 pounds of grass a day. These elephants, some of them are 40, 50 years old, working with these villages, some of them five generations back as they have been pulling out logs from the jungle for over a hundred years. Watch how the elephant navigates this tight space between these two trees better than any forklift could do. As he moves the log to a dragging trail where another elephant will pull it down to the river to a waiting raft. At the end of the day, the elephants are turned loose to take a bath and go graze on the plentiful vegetation. The mom and the babies frolic in the water. Each baby has a mom and three aunts. At night, they sleep in a quadrant around the baby to protect them from wild dogs. Here at the elephant camp, the doctor tests and checks the babies and the moms. This baby was an orphan and is very malnourished and is being bottle fed around the clock. And what are they making here? Raft? Yeah. Lumber raft. Lumber raft? Yeah. He just wants to make the raft and here they go. I can see why those guys want to stay in the middle of the river with that big cat. This is a logging containment raft. The guys float downstream, load the raft up with logs, and here it is. The bamboo holds them together until they can get down to the barges, where they pick the logs up, stack them on the barge, sail up river, and take them to a yard where they can get them unloaded, and then eventually sorted. Here's the barge after it's been emptied. And here's where the logs go. This is a large distribution yard where they separate the different species as the logs come down from the various rivers into the main city. You can see there is a substantial amount of logs prepared for export. Here's some old teak beams and cants and some small logs that we found and accumulated. Okay, example of some of the odds and ends logs. we can find. 
Most of these are butt logs, or the first logs that were left behind because color variants, and maybe it had some knots, and they didn't meet the early, tough European requirements to be completely clear and free of all cracks and defects. Today, these logs represent great character species in many different colors, shapes, and sizes. Many of these logs are over 400 years old, having been sawn over 100 years ago. They are well air-dried, that's for sure. Just don't get it stuck. <laughs> In the old days of logging, a typical tropical hardwood tree, say 90 feet tall, making four or five logs, the best two or three logs would often be exported, while the other logs would be dropped in a pile in the junk. These are the logs that we're retrieving today. And here's one of the trucks getting ready to take some of the old reclaimed logs down to the mill. And here is where the logs end up at the sawmill. They'll be debarked, sorted, cut, graded, processed, and this is where it all begins. Okay, this is oak from World War II that has bullet holes in it. Here we are in the sawmill. Logs are getting ready to go through the milling process. They've come out of the log ponds. They're getting put onto the log carriage. Crane is picking them up. These mammoth logs are old walnut logs from a Catholic monastery from the 1700s. The trees no longer produce fruit or nuts, so they've been logged out. Very beautiful Chinese type logs. Here you see the cans as we go through the mill that are set up for slicing where they're making the plywood for the underlayment. See the catchers down below as they drop slices off the log. This big steam-driven machine works like an old locomotive, pumping away. Hey, it's pretty loud in here. Also smells pretty good, all this wood being milled up. This is the top slicer that's making veneer for plywood. Again, for the core stock, for which the top rail layers will be glued up. Here you see the thickness of some of the plywood. Again, this will be made into the plywood underlayment. And this gentleman is checking for the soundness of the log before they start milling it. Here you see some of the production facilities. And here's a slicer. You'll notice both hands go up in the machine, so you can't cut your fingers off as he's slicing. Now, this happens to be for veneer and top wear layers where they're sorting for grade and for quality. Here we are in quality control, where we inspect the veneers very carefully for grade, thickness, length, color. This is some old walnut. And here the ladies are inspecting the walnut to determine which is the face and which is going to be the back. An important process in veneer selection. We say it's 100% hand scrape. It is 100% hand scrape. These are the dry kilns and the conditioning rooms used at the end of the finishing process to make sure that your floors are completely and evenly kiln dried and conditioned. And from the final conditioning room, the flooring goes into the showroom where it's ready for you and your customer. 
see the many different colors, shapes, and sizes. Scrapes, techniques, textures, making this flooring warm, inviting, and available to all. We hope you've enjoyed this tour, and we thank you for watching Woods of the World. The Lost Logs of Asia. <laughs> Taxi, please. Here we'd been walking one day, and I didn't realize it was break time as we walked into this small village, and the elephants tucked their trunks inside, and it was break time, and this young lady welcomed the elephants and the boys in, they were relatives, and the mom was cutting up a bunch of mangoes for us, you'll notice the mango slipping under his arm. Everybody gets a snack. Oh, so that was a snack stop. <laughs> <laughs>